This is a video on some of the important characteristics of the normal distribution, namely how the standard deviations, what the standard deviations tell you about the proportion of data in different parts of the distribution. So when we learned about frequency distributions, we learned about skewed distributions like this is a skewed distribution, skewed negatively skewed because the tail points um, to the lower numbers. And positive skew be when the tail points towards the larger numbers. And so um, these are skewed because the more of the data is on one side of the um, apex than the other. So they're asymmetrical. Now, unlike the skewed distributions, the normal distribution is symmetrical, meaning that 50% of the data are on the are, are um, higher than the midpoint and 50% are lower and so the midpoint of course is the median the median is the point at which 50% is higher and 50% is lower and the median is um, in the center of the distribution of course and then uh, what's also characteristic of the normal distribution and unique to it is that the mode is also is in the same place as the median and the mean is also in the same place. So the center of the distribution of a normal distribution is the median, mean, and mode which are all equal. So the normal distribution is also called a bell curve because it looks like a bell. So it turns out the normal distribution is very important because so many things in nature actually follow a normal distribution. So if you plot um, many variables, especially biological variables, but many non-biological variables as well, they follow a normal distribution. So for example, if you wanted to take heights of people and you were plotting them uh, in a histogram, you would, with more and more people, become, could get the distribution would get closer and closer to a normal distribution. So this distribution is really important. Um, and some say one of the most important concepts in statistics. Okay, so let's pretend we're measuring height and we're measuring the heights of every person in Chicago. So we're going to plot those heights here. Um, and so this is a distribution of heights in Chicago. And so um, in the center, of course, so we have this normal distribution in the center is the mean, okay? And 100% of the data fall under this curve, right? So, um, so not only do we have measures of central tendency associated with our data, but we also have measures of variability. So the standard deviation is a measure of, you know, the distance of every score from the mean, okay? So the normal distribution, um, in a normal distribution, you can um, you know that within one standard deviation of the mean on either side, okay, so this is the mean, this is mean height right here, um, right, mean height, and then this is one standard deviation, okay. And this is one standard deviation. I'll make a negative because um, it is one standard deviation below. Okay, so th whatever the mean height is, you have a standard deviation. So let's say, I don't know, the mean height is 60 inches. Okay, and then you have, let's say the standard deviation is 3 inches. Okay, so then this would be 63 inches. And this would be 57 inches. Obviously, that's not accurate, but anyway, and then um, two standard deviations here, and then three standard deviations. So we know this curve keeps going. Um, so we'll do it on the other side. Okay, so this is negative two standard deviations from the mean, negative three 
standard deviations from the mean. Okay, so then this would be 54, and this would be 51. Okay, 66. This is obviously, this is a shorter population than what actually lives in Chicago, but, well, I guess if we include the children, maybe it would be right. So, so as I said before, you know that 100% of the data fall within underneath this this whole curve and once you um, know the standard deviation you can actually say a lot more about the data so specifically let's shrink this a little bit so what you um, what you also know is that 68 percent of the data fall within one standard deviation of the mean. Okay, so right here, this is 68% of the data between, in, in our case here, between um, 57 and 63 lies 68% of the data. So um, you, after you've plotted this, you could say that 68% of the people in Chicago have a height between 57 and 63. Okay, and um, if we take it to two standard deviations, um, we can say, oh, let me go back here. So this is 68% of the data, okay? So then <clears throat> if we go within two standard deviations, okay, so we can say that This is 95% of the data. So um, once you've plotted this, and I'm just gonna, it's not gonna look very beautiful, but I'll go over this way. So um, you know that 95% of the people in Chicago have a height between 54 and 66, okay? So that's pretty cool. And then let's make it even smaller and, um, of course, oh, we're going to go to um, the third, uh, three standard deviations. So now we know that within three standard deviations, is 99.7% of the data. So this is very nice and helpful because um, once you know your data are normally distributed and you know that you have, you know what the mean is and you know what the standard deviation is, then you know very much about your uh, population, okay? So we're going to um, give some examples of how this might, what kind of problems, uh, say on the boards, you might get given this information. So this is really important to remember. You have to memorize um, these, these three values, okay? So here's a much nicer picture of the normal distribution, and the standard deviations are down here, um, and this even shows you a half of a standard deviation. But you could figure all of this out from the picture that um, I gave you before with those three numbers, 68%, um, 95%, and 99.7%. But this just shows it um, broken down a little bit more. And so you might have questions that will ask you um, to use this uh, breakdown. Okay, so I just wanted to show it to you in more detail. And uh, that's it. So um, try the practice problems just to make sure that you know how to work with this. There's a number of different um, types of information that you uh, will be asked to derive from a normal distribution. So just practice with the problem sets. Thanks a lot.